Hello and welcome to everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are dialing in for this, uh, this webcast. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, this webcast is as part of a series that's presented by Henley and Partners. My name's Thomas Scott, Head of uh, Real Estate at Henley and Partners. Today's webinar is uh, about the top European real estate linked investment migration programs. We're going to give you an overview, give you some, some, some detail um, and answer your questions and give you a little bit of an education about it all. I'm delighted today to be joined by, by three colleagues, Andres uh, Guterres, who's our program manager from Spain. Andres is dialing in from Barcelona. Uh, we've got Vasia Zakos, who uh, heads up our team in Athens and is part of our real estate team there. Uh, Vasia is dialing in from Athens. And we have Gianfranco Stellini, who's the director of real estate, who's dialing in from Malta. So just in terms of a quick overview for today's webcast, we'll give a little introduction to Henley and Partners, an introduction to international real estate. Then we'll look to cover the re Spanish Residency by Investment Program and its real estate offering. We'll then give an overview of the Greek Golden Visa Program and its real estate offering, and then Malta's Citizenship and Residency Programs thereafter. Following that, there'll be a question and answer session, but uh, as you'll see, and most of you I'm sure are familiar with Zoom, you can put some questions in on the, uh, on the group. Um, while the webinar is going on, we'll look to answer all of those at the end of them. Uh, the session, we encourage participation and interaction, so please do ask your questions. We can, of course, follow up after the webcast with any direct answers and further questions and share brochures, et cetera, and further information. But to kick things off, just a little bit of background about the firm, about Henley & Partners. Henley & Partners is the global leader in residency and citizenship by investment. Each year, we have uh, hundreds of individuals, as well as their advisors, that rely on us for our expertise, as well as our experience in this area. Uh, the firm has highly qualified professionals and client advisors that work together as one team from over 45 of our own offices worldwide. And we have been servicing clients and advising clients for over 25 years now. The concept of residency and citizenship by investment was actually created by Henley and Partners back in the 1990s. And I suppose as globalization has expanded, uh, both residency and citizenship have become topics of significant interest. Uh, with an increasing number of international mobile entrepreneurs and investors um, wanting to know what their options are and consider it. And we proudly serve these clients on a daily basis. And to date, we have actually advised over 25,000 clients and been able to raise over $12 billion in foreign direct investment. Um, our client advisors are able to offer Clients and investors currently over 40 different programs. These programs are a mixture of residency and citizenship programs. From the map and the slide that you see in front of you here, you can see that we're fortunate, fortunate that there is a real global array of the programs we can offer. There is a large amount in Europe, of which we'll be covering some key ones today. Um, but you'll also see that there are programs in Americas, Caribbean, Middle East, Asia, Africa, and Australasia. Our global presence, which I mentioned briefly earlier, we have over 45 offices worldwide now. This really is a, a unique feature to Henley and Partners. We are proud to have these offices and to be able to offer our clients a real, a genuine end-to-end -end service. Uh, our offices tend to be in, in prime locations within the cities and the countries that they're located. And ultimately, these provide spaces uh, where we can meet with our clients uh, and investors on a face-to-face -face basis. And our offices are also in countries where there are programs so that we can engage with the local governments, with the banks and local authorities on behalf of our clients, our investors, and also in these offices, in these countries, many of which we have our real estate teams and are able to operate. Offer, uh, offer our, our real estate services. 
So just want to give you a quick introduction overview of real estate with specifically investment migration in mind. Um, this slide highlights the leading European investment migration programs. Quick to point out that not all of them actually have a real estate component that qualifies them for citizenship, but um, but many, many of them do. Uh, for example, Portugal's on this slide, and we actually know it's been well documented recently that Portugal, uh, for the program there, real estate no longer qualifies an investment criteria, uh, but Spain and Greece and Malta do. And you'll also see uh, two logos and emblems for Malta there, and that's because they have both a residency and a citizenship program, which we'll dive into a little bit later. But just quickly, before you get too bored of, of my voice, uh, I wanted to highlight some considerations about real estate and investment migration. And the real takeaway for you here should be that not all real estate transactions will qualify for investment migration or residency by investment. You need to be careful as an investor and you need to be guided by an industry expert to avoid making what could ultimately prove an, an expensive mistake. So the some of the key considerations would be that each program, whether that program be Spain, Greece, or Malta, uh, has a different investment, a minimum investment threshold. It could be 250,000 euros, 500,000 or even 700,000 euros, depending on the program. These thresholds can even vary within a country, uh, depending on where, where the city or depending on the suburb or depending on the population density. The, the governments in that program will set its criteria. And of course, we can advise accordingly. It, it also could be that only residential real estate qualifies um, for some programs and other programs, commercial and hospitality investment and real estate could be acceptable. The type of ownership is also important. In some programs, co-ownership of a property could be permitted, whereas in others, it is very strict that only a full title, single titled, 100% ownership, title deeded ownership is permitted. Um, some programs are actually encouraging of real estate investment in certain geographical locations within a country. So investors really need to have their eyes wide open to that. Uh, a program like Greece also enables an investor to be able to rent out the property that they've invested in, thereby earning a passive income, whereas a, a program like Malta does not permit this. So we just really want you to be aware that there are considerations and restrictions and, and encourage you to have an expert to guide you in this process. With regards to Henley and Partners and our real estate services, we have uh, various offers, offices where we can offer clients key property and real estate related services, such as facilitating and assisting with the buying and selling of property, or even leasing a property or even uh, managing a property. In some countries, we're actually managing more than 450 properties for our clients. Uh, we have teams there, um, obviously dedicated the, the property management and the lease procurement on that side. Um, we're also able to assist clients with a financial management, which could include uh, tax returns and a declaration of rental income. But most importantly, we have local knowledge and we understand what our clients should be doing in that specific country and program in order to fulfill the requirements for their residency or their citizenship by investment application. And again, the ultimate goal is to assist our clients who often live thousands of miles away or reside thousands of miles away. And we want to make their experience sort of as hassle-free and as enjoyable um, as possible for them. So that's why we've adapted our, our real estate services and, and have our teams. But really now I want to pass on to Andres, who's going to speak in a little bit more detail about the Spanish program and, and the real estate elements of that. So over to you, Andres. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, pleasure to be here. Um, my name is Andres. I'm based here in Barcelona and looking at a little bit of the key takeaways of the Spanish residency by investment programs. Very important things. 
So we can see in this slide, it is not on one side. There is no minimum stay in Spain that is required for residents, um, for residents that obtain residency through an investment. Those residents permit the issue for three years and then renew it every five years, you know, as long as the investment that is held, an investment that is done before the, um, the, the application that is submitted. Also, the program is very straightforward and very fast. Applications at the residency stage, they are done digitally, so no paperwork has to fly from your residency to, to our offices here in Spain. And the maximum time of uh, decision, it is 20 working days in case the government has not issued any communication to us as your representatives. Um, and then basically, very importantly, and last but not the least, um, the nationals from basically Equatorial Guinea, Latin America, the Philippines, and, and other nationalities can apply for Spanish citizenship after only two years of effectively residing here of Spain, in Spain. So it is very straightforward, takes around five to seven months in total, uh, very fast at the processing stage, and nationals from those jurisdictions can obtain nationality in Spain after making a significant investment of half a million euros in real estate, living two years here in the country. Um, and yes, just basically this uh, great, great option and great optionality. And uh, talking about the, the real estate investment options, basically it's very important to, to understand that clients when they come here, they have three main options. And this by um, level of importance, uh, in these hotel developments and commercial real estate, it's a minimum of half, half a million euros. Uh, and it's very important to note that this is the most straightforward way of obtaining residency by investment. Um, of course, then, if the applicant wants to buy a lifestyle property, again, for over half a million euros, uh, we can assist, but of course, this is recommended for investors which are interested in relocating to Spain for different considerations because you know they want to stay here more time, they want to come to the country, visit, etc. Of course, once a client has made an investment in a hotel and commercial real estate, and one, two, or three years down the line, they want to buy um, a lifestyle property, they can do so. So on the next slide what we are going to be seeing it is those main advantages basically of those hotels why a client should consider investing in a hotel development or in commercial real estate instead of a lifestyle property and it's very simple and straightforward first of all these hotel developments and commercial real estate they have in some cases warranted returns and exit strategy they have lower to no property taxes against to what happens with lifestyle properties in, um, in Spain. So just to give you an example, if a client or if an investor is going to buy residential property, a resale property here in, uh, in Barcelona, for example, a stamp duty is 10%, but if commercial property, it is 2.5%. And hotel development, it is shoulder, the VAT payment, it is actually covered by the developer. So it is a very interesting point to look into that, and of course, then into capital appreciation. So all in all, it is a hassle-free investment which has a win-to-win -win perspective or approach because it is straightforward for the golden visa process. It is a good investment opportunity. And then in time with the residence card, the clients can check what lifestyle properties, what they want to buy. Going to the first option, the hotel developments, what we're going to be seeing here, it is the San Blas um, hotel development in Madrid, in the north of Spain and close to the F1 track that it has been um, happening in Madrid soon. So basically in the farther slide, in the next slide, sorry, we're going to the investment project over. This is an investment that is for a total of 30 million euros. It is not huge, but it's not a small. 60 investor minimum investment of half a million euros of a, in a boutique hotel, which grants 3% um, yield, basically paid up front for over 10 years. So the investors make an investment of half a million euros, and in the next 15 days or so, they receive 10 years yield in advance. This equals to 150,000 euros. 
then the VAT, as I said before, the shoulder is covered by the developer, so there are no expenses there. And after 10 years of operations, the hotel developer makes a buyback. There's a warranted buyback. So that means that on year one, the investor invests half a million euros, gets 10 years of uh, yields in advance, 150K. And in 10 years, his share gets uh, bought back at half a million euros. So it's very interesting from a financial perspective. And of course, as well, um, other, other, um, other benefits. Basically, San Blas, Galicia has this trick, as said before, in the north of Spain, 20 minutes from the city center. It is uh, a known place, really, really interesting place to be in the next few years. So then on the next slide, the other option that we're going to see is commercial property for clients that are not feeling comfortable with the hotel developments can invest in commercial real estate which means that basically a client invests in a shop which is rented out and has two options. Basically on one side, um, the client can get a leaseback agreement by which he gets paid again, 150,000 euros in, in advance, which is the value of those 10 years, basically of rent. And it is completely hassle-free for, uh, for the investor or can choose to, um, get the monthly rent on a year, on a, on a monthly basis. This has the advantage that has lower property transfer taxes than residential real estate. And as it happens with hotel developments, there is the possibility of setting up an escrow account. So no need to open a bank account in Spain. So basically on the next slide, what we're going to see is some examples. What we're talking here, we're talking commercial, properties between 60 to 100 meters in Barcelona or Madrid city centers, bars, restaurants, retails, offices, which are wanting to establish in these capital cities. So on the next slide, finally, if the investor is not interested in commercial property or residential and actually wants to um, live in Spain and knows where he or she wants to go, can invest in lifestyle properties. And here you have some options like, for example, Antares Barcelona, beautiful finished development, 20 minutes from the city center and 25 minutes from, um, from, uh, from the airport. And some pictures that we're going to see on the next slides of the sea views, beautiful place and beautiful and excellent qualities of the, um, of the, of the development itself. Other options, for example, exclusive villas, in the south of Spain, like for example, this one's in Benavides. Here we have a villa of 750 square meters, two swimming pools, and all what you would like to, to want for lifestyle purposes. And then this one of Estepona, a little bit smaller. The important thing is, depending any anything that you would like, if it is in Barcelona, Madrid, the south of Spain, or the Balearic Islands in, in terms of a lifestyle, we can assist with our trusted partners in Spain. Um, and of course, basically, we're going to be more than happy to assist you further and have any conversation in regards to hotel developments or commercial real estate and happy to assist you with my team of our, our relation managers here in Barcelona. Thank you very much and over to you, Tom. Andres, thank you very much for talking us through the Greek, uh, the, the Spanish program and, and the different types of properties, commercial, hotel, and residential slash lifestyle. And now I'm going to pass over to Vasya in, in Athens to, to guide us, give us a summary of the Greek program and, and the exciting real estate landscape there. And, and we all know from the information that's been out in the industry and much spoken about is how popular the, the Greek program has been of recent. So look forward to hearing from you now, Vasya. Thanks, Tom. Hi, everyone. So yes, um, Greece has really been seen as a success story recently. In fact, it was named by The Economist in 2023 as the global country of the year. So here we can see an overview. You guys can all see that the program has been around for just over 10 years now. Um, it is, as Tom mentioned, one of the most popular programs in Europe right now, as we do have um, one of the more affordable options because the minimum investment amount is 250,000. And that's in uh, most areas of Greece, most islands, but only some areas of Athens, which we'll go into more detail um, in a little bit. 
Um, so yes, as we can move on to the next slide to look at the key benefits of the program. So um, this program really is a win-win approach because uh, it gives you the opportunity to rent out your property so you can get rental income in, uh, as a bonus to your golden visa. It's a, resident, it's a residence permit that's addressed to non-EU national investors and it's renewable every five years. As well with this program, there is no physical presence required. If you choose not to stay in Greece, you are not forced to. Um, and you are still unable to have working rights here in Greece. This is something that the government is currently working on. However, you are able to remain a shareholder of a company and receive passive income in Greece. So now looking more into detail of our real estate options, um, the next slide here shows a visual representation of the 250,000 areas that you must invest or 500,000 areas. So the blue on the right shows that most of Athens there is highlighted as the 500,000 investment threshold, as well as the two popular islands, Santorini and Mykonos. Whereas on the left, you can see that the majority of Greece does still remain um, in 250,000. So yes, as we can see here, um, the, at the top two pictures are photos of Piraeus, which are two, which are which is the most popular area right now under the 250,000 threshold. Um, Piraeus has been a very popular location for our investors. Um, it's a very vibrant area with marinas such as Marina Zeas and Pasalimani. Um, it's also um, the main port of Athens. So there's been a lot of interest here, as well as on the bottom left, you can see the northern suburbs of Athens is still um, under the more affordable option for investment, such as Yeraka, which is a more family residential area. And as well, under the 250,000 thresholds are our eastern suburbs of Athens, all the way to Saronikos area. So this Athens Riviera is a beautiful coastline of Athens, and this is under the 500,000 threshold. It's a coastal avenue with trendy bars, waterfront cafes, pedestrian walkways. Um, it's a beautiful area and it's perfect for people who want to get away from the busyness of the city because only 20 to 25 minutes away, you are in the Riviera, which stretches from Palio Falido towards and past Buriagmeni. So this is an example of one of our offerings in Piraeus. So we partner with um, trusted developers who are very well capitalized. And uh, we've had builds like this in Piraeus area, which you can invest in for the minimum amount, the more affordable option. And uh, there's this would be a perfect option for someone looking to have a long-term a long-term rental, as there's a University of Piraeus nearby, so it would be a perfect option for students as their tenants, but also for families working in shipping or couples themselves. And then this is another example of um, the more affordable option for investment. So this is in Yereka, one of the northern suburbs that I had uh, addressed earlier. It's There's um, a lot of investment happening in this area right now, which is really putting up the value in the neighborhood, um, such as government projects. There's also many sports facilities, schools, shopping malls nearby. So this is what makes it the perfect option for families who want to reside here. And over here is an option uh, on one of our islands. I know that you guys have all heard of Baros. It is high on the list of uh, Greek holiday destinations. Um, so this would be a great option for someone, again, who wants to invest in the more affordable threshold. Um, it would be great for yourself if you are looking to buy a vacation home or you are looking to do a short-term rental for Airbnbs um, as it can give you a pretty fa favorable return on your investment at about six to seven percent. 
And then lastly, here we have uh, a new development in Vola as an example of one of the neighborhoods in the Athens Riviera that I had referred to before. So this is under the more expensive threshold at 500,000. Um, again, like I said, this is perfect for the people who are looking to get um, outside of the hustle and bustle of the city center. Um, Vola is a beautiful residential area. Um, with waterfront uh, cafes, beaches, um, and shopping areas. It's very trendy. So we've seen a lot of demand here for our investors as well as, as it is very beautiful. So thank you so much. Thank you, Vasha. That was great, great overview. And uh, I'll pass on to Gianfranco in Malta now to talk about both the permanent residency program as well as the citizenship program in Malta, which I think it's known that there really are, that there, there are very few citizenship programs remaining and or currently on offer in, um, in Europe. And Malta really is an incredible program, very robust and rigorous in its due diligence. And um, without further ado, I'll let Gianfranco speak a little bit more. Thank you, Tom. Um, good morning to everybody. Um, as Tom correctly stated, um, uh, we have two uh, programs here in Malta, um, one being the MESD, which is the citizenship program, and the other one being the RP and VRP, which is the uh, residency program. I will go, I will briefly mention um, both programs and then how they tie into uh, real estate, uh, real estate options here in Malta. So the MESD program is very popular, as Tom correctly stated. Um, I would say the main reason being that the Maltese passport. Um, uh, is, is one can access 185 countries without the need for a visa through the Maltese passport, uh, including uh, more importantly the Schengen areas, and that that seems to be um, obviously one of the most most important um, one of the most important things um, to do so. And also, um, I would say, um, as Tom also correctly stated, Malta is also a very pro business uh, pro business country, and also I would say a very nice place to live. Um, Maybe a bit biased here, but we've got nine, ten months of the year with sunshine and nice weather, um, uh, and also we've got many attractive, many attractive um, and strategic air, air links from from Malta. Going on to the next to the next slide, briefly here, um, one can see the financial requirements um, uh, for a single applicant. Um, so one would need to make, depending on whether one would want to go down the twelve month or the thirty six month route. Um, one would need to make a contribution of 750,000 or 600,000, depending on the length of time one would need um, to, to get his application process. Also a donation to one of, one of their, there's a list of, of charities and there's, you know, one can choose uh, their, preferred, their preferred charity from hospice to, to an animal sanctuary, so it could be anything of, 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 of that kind. Um, also, um, um, one would need to know that to purchase a property, so as regards to minimums, to purchase a property, the minimum uh, in Malta is 700,000. And if one wanted to rent, because Malta must be one of the only countries in Europe where you can rent and purchase. Um, so to purchase, the minimum is 700,000. And then to rent, the minimum is 16,000 euros. So if one had to put everything together, if one had to choose the rental option, Okay, uh, together with the contributions and the donations, one is looking for a single applicant, a total, total um, contribution of around 900,000 euros for a 12 month route and around 750,000 for a 36 month, uh, 36 month route. Um, now, this is the residency, the permanent residency program, the MPRP, um, the process is the way it's processed is much, is much faster. Um, this is usually processed within four to six months, contrary to the one year and three year options in the citizenship um, citizenship options. And there's no minimum stay in Malta. Um, no minimum stay is required, but obviously one would need to travel to Malta to get his uh, biometrics done. Once these residency cards are issued, uh, we at Henley can obviously, can obviously um, process those and be able to take care of those and send them over to you. Um, also, I wanted to mention um, that, that um, uh, you know, anybody who's, who is a successful applicant and has been accepted um, and granted a residency uh, permit, that is usually valid for five years and then extended every five years uh, thereon. 
as we're seeing here in this next slide, the financial requirements are obviously less than citizenship. Okay, one would need to make a contribution. If one is purchasing a property, the contribution would need to be of 28,000 euros. Um, and if one is renting, the contribution would be of around 58,000 euros. Okay, um, you'd also have a non refundable administration fee of 40,000 euros. There's also a donation similar to we saw. Um, in citizenship, but this time it's lower from 10,000, it's lower down to 2,000, okay? Now, to give you a bit of an idea as regards to property minimums, where it comes to residency, um, these would be if one wanted to purchase, it would be in the region of around 350,000, and if one wanted to rent, that would be in the region of around 12,000 euros. I would say the main financial requirement um, to, to apply for, for residency would be to prove that, that one owns 500,000 euros in capital, um, with around 150,000 of, of, um, of those being in financial, financial instruments. Now, um, it's also important to tie in, since this talk is about um, real estate options, okay, which um, I give you a brief overview uh, of how real estate ties in to, to, um, to, the two, to the two options we just presented. Um, in Malta, from a very young age, we are, we are always uh, you know, taught and always urged to purchase our own property. Um, from when we are young, and and uh, I think this must be the main reason why roughly 81% of Maltese nationals own their own um, uh, their own property, uh, and that is 81% is about 10% higher than the EU average. That, together with the steady flow of foreign nationals coming to Malta, be it for relocation, for work, or for retirement, has paved the way for a golden opportunity. Um, for one to purchase real estate in Malta as as, a, as an investment, as an investment, um, many of the of these um, uh, investments that, that many of these developments that have been that have been set up in Malta um, are situated towards the Saint Julian's and Slema areas. Um, these developments are known as special designated areas, and these are, um, although it sounds like a, a very technical term, is nothing nothing more than um, a development whereby a non-EU national and an EU national would be granted the same rights um, uh, when, when it comes to purchasing when it comes to purchasing a, pro a property. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to notice is one thing I wanted to notice that these that these SDAs, especially designated areas, um, are mostly situated in these two particular locations of St. Julian's and Slim because these are um, seafront seafront villages and uh, and I would. I would most definitely say that that uh, luxury high-end properties with views are the most requested properties uh, by our clients. Now I'm going to going to show you um, four different options that we have currently here um, uh, through offerings through uh, Henley and Partners directly. Um, this is a this is a penthouse in uh, Puerto Mazo Laguna, which is a particular SDA, okay, which could be found in St. Julian's. You know, it's a beautiful two-bedroom unit. Um, with a, a lagoon, lagoon together with views of the sea, the boat marina, the casino. So it's all, um, you know, it's beautifully situated and that is offered at around two and a half million euros. The second property that we have on offer is, is um, uh, situated also in St. Julian's, this time in Baluta Bay. Um, you know, all very, very beautiful, very beautiful places, you know, all dotted with, with cafes and restaurants. And promenades where one can, can enjoy the you know the beautiful weather when when, when lounging um, around. Um, this property is offered at three million euros. We also have another two properties now, um, which has, which are offered at below. So the properties in Malta are not all um, in the millions. We also have properties with views and and, and you know very nice properties below the one million threshold. We've got this particular property offered at nine hundred and fifty thousand, which has. Um, beautiful views of the Spinola Bay area, um, where there are a number of very nice fish restaurants, uh, cafes, and as I mentioned before, the promenade, which could take you literally from St. Julian's all the way to the capital city uh, of Malta, which is Valletta. And lastly, another property, which is literally three, four hundred meters away from the other property I showed you. This is a brand new two bedroom property. Um, literally the same thing um, on the seafront, okay? Um, just, been, just been finished, just been done up, and this is offered for 780,000. So this would be perfect if somebody wanted to do, for example, the citizenship program and wanted to go in at the minimum of 
um, 700,000, this would be uh, an ideal, an ideal property um, uh, for, for, um, to purchase, to, to, to use for the, for the program. One thing I wanted to mention is that in Malta, besides, um, besides um, clients being able to purchase property, here in Malta at Henley & Partners Real Estate, we offer a one-stop shop whereby one can um, purchase a property, rent a property, and also we offer property management. Um, and that way we'll be able to, to, to give you total peace of mind, um, uh, whereby we've got in excess, of, in excess of 500 properties where we could you know, take, take care of all your needs where it comes to real estate. That's it from my end, Tom. Thank you, Gianfranco. Yeah, that, that was a great overview. Thank you very much. And yeah, I think very desirable properties. I think, I think I'd rather be there there in London right now, but- um, Yes, 20 degrees at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks fantastic. So there, there, now we move on to the question and answer section. Um, I've received a couple, of questions. Um, actually, the first one or two I see are for, for Greece. Uh, uh, Vasia, your best place to answer this. It says, which actually is a question which I've seen discussed a few times. The, uh, I'll surmise the question, but it, it's uh, what are the, the benefits of purchasing a, a new development versus a resale property? So, a resale property being one through a secondhand property through a broker. And at the same time, the other another question relates to that is, and what areas, I think you mentioned Piraeus, but maybe you can highlight again, which areas have been the most popular for, for maybe for the 250,000 euro investment and the 500,000? Yeah, of course. So um, in terms of um, new developments versus resales, so in overall for the golden visa process, new development purchases will usually be more speedier um, as this is because developers have paperwork in order um, much in advance. Whereas with resale properties, um, usually owners um, only have paperwork ready once they receive a buyer um, in, in question as a prospect. Um, in addition, in terms of a property management perspective, uh, new developments will always be easier as um, you won't encounter as many problems as with resales. And then thirdly, from a buyer's perspective, um, with new developments in Greece, you are not obliged to pay a 2% agent fee, which you must pay by law in Greece, which is usually the case with resales as, uh, uh, as brokers usually take those properties on. Um, in terms of popular areas, um, yes, Piraeus is on the top of the list in terms of the 250,000 threshold. Um, I would also say that the northern suburb of Yerika has also been quite popular because a lot of families um, have shown interest there from the tenant side. So investors um, think that that's an attractive option as they will get uh, as they're guaranteed long term tenants there. And then in terms of the 500,000 threshold, I would say um, the South Athens area, Rilfada, Vola that I mentioned um, has been the top of the list. And before uh, we move on to the next question, I also wanted to mention that uh, there has been headlines, which I'm sure people have seen that the uh, Greece Golden Visa program may change its investment rules. However, this has been still under discussion for quite some time now, and there has been no official announcements yet. So as of now and in the near future, um, the rules that I mentioned during this presentation still hold true. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you, Vasya. So what I took away is from the new developments section there, and I think we've seen it in a, with, with our clients, and, and, and there has been much talk about it, but quite often buying a property from a developer like a, a brand new property can mean that it's a simpler and a faster processing time and as there's no mortgage that has to be cancelled from the seller and the, the the paperwork and the contractual work is kind of there's no level of ne negotiation per se or back and forth between a buyer and seller. if a client is looking for a speedy application and a quick submission then they're buying it from a uh, from a developer is probably more advantageous. And whilst we see a lot of these beautiful images on the wonderful and sensational Greek islands, it's, is it fair to say that the, the majority of investors are still buying in Athens? 
Yes, that's correct. The majority of our investors are looking in Athens um, just because it's a long term um, renter opportunity there. Um, and most people don't want to deal with, I guess, the more responsibilities that come with having an Airbnb, for example. But you are correct. Um, also, with the new developments in general, it is a smoother transaction. Got you. Great. Thank you. Uh, Gianfranco, there's a, a question or two regarding Malta. Um, I think to paraphrase the, the best locations or the most popular locations, which I think you, you mentioned, maybe Shalema and St. Julian's because of the SDA, but I'll let you confirm that. And the, the second yes. one was, the are, are the properties sourced through Henley and Partners or from, develop, from developers or brokers, or, or how does the setup work for, for, for clients, Henley and Partners, clients in Malta? Thank you, Tom. Yes, um, as you correctly stated, and I mentioned in the in the presentation, Slema and Saint Julian's are the two most requested locations. Um, since they are since they are um, seafront seafront villages, um, and there are a number of of very good restaurants and cafes and and you know promenades for one to enjoy walking along. Um, and the SDAs that are built specifically in these regions, in these regions, um, I would say these are the most these are the most popular uh, areas because because the high end high end luxury um, apartments, the high end apartments are built are mostly built in these two locations. Um, where you where you mentioned before um, uh, about property offerings through Henley Apartments, yes, I think um, uh, we are pretty unique here in Malta, whereby um, we can offer. A range of options, but we we can offer property directly through Henley and Partners rather than um, one going ground and looking at different uh, you know to different brokers or or, or straight to developers etc. Um, you can you can do that straight through Henley and Partners. Um, and also, we've got agreements with uh, a number of top agencies here in Malta, um, whereby whereby we are we have access to their to their properties too so if one wanted to purchase a property here in malta uh, and is and is being seen to buy the, uh, the 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 team here in malta for their for their citizenship or residency needs um, it would obviously make sense to have to use henry as their one stop shop whereby um, whatever they see online from whichever broker or directly from our website um, we would be able to provide them with that real estate um, directly through henry Great. Thanks, Gianfranco. And Andres, um, one or two questions for me. I know you've been red hot at uh, replying to everyone's questions uh, directly online, but I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll pose a couple of them just because they might well be, be useful answers to the greater audience. But um, it's, we know that real estate is not the only investment criteria in Spain. But um, I think, as you said in your presentation, quite often real estate can actually be the most straightforward and time efficient um, investment criteria, op op an option available. Um, but perhaps just highlight the other options and, and why the advantages of real estate. Um, and then just regarding the, there's one or two questions about the commercial and hotel option you you mentioned and highlighted, which seemed very attractive with the lease back. Obviously, after 10 years, what happens is someone still need a, a qualifying asset in order to retain their residency going forward? Yeah, absolutely, Don. And thanks very much for the questions. Um, so other options to qualify for the Spanish Golden Visa are a 2 million euro investment in a Spanish government bonds, which to be honest with you, Almost no one does because it is four times investment in real estate and up to a year and a half ago, interest rates uh, on the Spanish government, government bonds were negative. So not, not a great idea. Um, the other option is investment in a Spanish financial assets, Spanish funds or um, deposits, financial deposits here in Spain at 1 million euros. So in that sense, it may be a little bit faster than real estate, but we're doubling the investment. So these two things have made the real estate investment the preferred choice for global investors that want to make an investment in Spain and to qualify for the golden visa. And within the real estate investment, the um, most um, straightforward path, it is the hotel development and the commercial real estate 
basically because it is more um, uh, fiscally efficient from a tax perspective. Of course, um, it has their warranty returns on around 3% or 3% actually for the, for the lease back in hotel. And what happens, as we were mentioning, after we get to the 10 years mark, uh, after the 10 years mark, at the end of the day, the investor will have made an investment of half a million euros, getting 150K will be at, at a gain at the end of the day, uh, having obtained their residence and enjoy the residence card in Spain, eventually qualifying for citizenship. So if they qualify for citizenship, they do not need to help the qualifying investment in Spain. But if the buyback is exercised and they want to keep enjoying the residence card, they would just simply need to make another qualifying investment of half a million euros or whichever it is that in 10 years time and keep on enjoying the Spanish Golden Visa or residence by investment permit. Thank you, Andres. That, that's great. Just scrolling through the, the, the questions that have been, they've all been answered. I think there's a couple of questions, two people have asked whether this was recorded and it, it has been, and it will be shared with everyone that's participated and, and, and attended. We've got all your details, so that will be shared. Um, so really, nothing left to say other than say th thank you to the panelists, Andres, Gianfranco and Vasia. Thank you very much. Thank you to you all for, for dialing in. There is a session this afternoon, uh, UK time, Central European time, um, a second session. But thank you all very much for your interest. We we welcome you at any of our Henley and Partners offices or to contact us uh, directly. The, uh, I'll, on this last slide here, you'll see the contact details, uh, which we'll share. But and again, they'll be on the on the information that's sent out to you post this webcast. So thank you very much. Wish you a, a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening wherever you are in the world. But thank you very much to you all. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye.